Hello friends and welcome to this video. So in this video is mostly for people interested in tube amp design and what I'm going to discuss is filament bias and especially for indirectly heated tubes and I'll give you the summary why you would like to do this. So in my amp I actually use filament bias for the dire for a directly heated tube and also for the indirectly heated tube and it has big advantages. Um, mainly in sound quality because we actually eliminate a, a capacitor from the signal part so that's good um, however we also with this one we can actually reduce the side of uh, size of the grid stopper which um, and prevent any oscillations really from happening also by using filament bias and this is quite uncommon and i don't see it much so that i thought maybe it's a good idea to actually put this in a video how we do this for indirectly heated tubes and I just listed you the advantages. So oscillation control is many times improved. Uh, it gets lots easier. There's hardly any, and I'll tell you why. It's, it's completely overlooked by a lot of people, I think, um, because this is a very high gain uh, tube, and they, they they're prone to oscillation, unlike these. So it's not really an advantage for these. So strangely enough, the filament bias is much more used, I think, for directly heated than for indirectly heated tubes. So we're going to use it as schematics and I'll, I'll explain a little bit why we're getting the sound quality things um, that we get and how the oscillation uh, gets improved uh, or actually eliminated. So that's what this video is about. So I'll compare it a little bit with a normal cathode bias setup. Yes, there is fixed bias, but um, fixed bias also requires a very um, solid supply of fixed bias that never can drop away because if it drops away, it destroys the tube. So I'm going to hold, hold filament, I'm going to contrast filament bias versus cathode bias. Um, so what we're doing in producing filament bias versus cathode bias, this is a typical cathode bias. This is actually the, the cathode bias that is um, would be for the tube that I'm using here in my amp, the 6S45P. So this is a high gain, high transconductance tube. So it has a very low plate resistance, which and it amplifies about 52 times, at least according to the speculator. It's usually a bit lower. Um, Plate resistance, depending a little bit, but between 1100 and 1500 ohms, depending how much current you put through here. I'm running 50 milliamps through it, um, and I'm using 2.3 volt bias to give me enough headroom uh, with the incoming signal. And um, yes, so this is the cathode bias setup where we have this resistor here produces the bias so this increases so but with the 50 milliamps that streams to 150 ohms will actually put the bias at 2.3 volts which is um, pretty pretty optimal and if we then look at um, now if we didn't have this bypass capacitor the plate resistance would actually go up to 9150 ohms and that's because of the high gain of this tube so it actually magnifies the resistor here used you have to sort of multiply it I think by mu minus 1 so that it times 51 um, we have to add that to the 1200 and so we would get a 9150 so by actually shortcutting this with a capacitor so that all the AC signal can go through here we em eliminate the influence of this um, and we, 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 we actually retain full amplification and we also retain um, the low plate resistance that we want because that will powerfully um, enable us to drive the next stage or uh, use an interstage transformer if we want to but we can also directly connect or a capacitor couple this. Now why it improves by fill using filament uh, bias, we're going to eliminate this capacitor and we're going to reduce this um, resistor so we don't get this increase. And why we're doing this is because if you look at the signal, a signal, the music signal incoming, always needs to make a full circuit. Um, else, of course, it doesn't, a uh, current can't run in, unless it has a full, a complete circuit. So when the signal comes on, the circuit goes like this. And it doesn't go through the 150 ohms. Instead, because this is an AC signal, this appears as a virtually, um, you know, 
fraction of an ohm resistance here you, uh, through this capacitor. So this is the way the circuit completes. So your signal actually runs through this capacitor back to the preamp or your source. So that's why this thing is in the signal path. A lot of people think it isn't, but it is completely in the signal path, as is the grid stopper here. Now, in order to... And we just saw if we just eliminate this, we actually don't don't get we get less amplification and we also get a higher plate resistance. So we have to solve this. And the best thing to solve solve this is is um, to um, reduce this value. And why we can, and how we can reduce this value? If you have Ohm's law, of course, um, the voltage is equal to um, the current times the resist, uh, resistance. So if we want the same um, voltage here and we want to lower the resistance we have to increase the current and what we're doing we can do this by actually using the current of the filament to reduce that resistor so that's what we're doing here so here is the schematic to do um, um, filament bias for a indirectly heated tube is we actually connect on one side of the filament we connect that to the, the cathode and we, what we do is we add the D, we now need to use DC for the filament and that will also prevent oscillations by the way, I'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, we adding to the 50 milliamps that we already had, we add 440 milliamps of um, filament current to this resistor which we now can then reduce to 5.1, 5.2 ohms and we get the same bias of 2.3 volts. However, now if we look at the signal path, we actually now have eliminated the capacitor and instead we have about a 5.1, 5.2 ohms resistor, which is really easy to make it of high quality. And because of this type of current, it only needs to dissipate about, um, about 1 watts that it needs to dissipate in heat. So that's very manageable. And the other advantage that we get is because now this filament, which is in the middle of your tube very close to these plates and normally a lot of people use AC heating and then they have problems with oscillation now yeah people talk about radio signals and other stuff but what you're doing is you're taking 6.3 volts of AC at 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz depending on where you are of 440 milliamps which is way more than any of the other currents that your tube is handling and you're putting it in the middle of this little glass envelope oscillating away now what i found is that if i even in this situation put dc on this tube i can reduce the size of the grid stopper uh, by an enormous amount and i don't get any oscillations so the same would probably happen in, in, in your in a tube amp. So if you have a tube amp design where you, you turn all your filaments to the DC, you won't have any AC in your amp near your signal tubes or any of your signal paths. And you'll see that hum and oscillations just become, a, a, you know, also, especially if you use a metal case, of course, you won't have all these inf outside influences. I think they're mostly caused by the AC that you're uh, having uh, running through the middle of your amp um, near very sensitive signals because we're talking about the signal stage. So once we do that, we can also reduce the grid restopper, which means that the resistance for your signal and the number of um, components influencing the signal reduces, plus your you don't have any oscillation issues that might pop up at certain frequencies of the music and, and uh, ruin the sound quality like that with ringing and lasting insulations and instability. So those are the advantages of indirectly heated filament bias. And the disadvantage, of course, is that you need to provide a very stable DC um, because any variation here is the same as putting up the same signal uh, there. So it needs to be quiet enough so that it's not audible. Um, so you need a very, I personally use a Rod Coleman um, regulator for that. So that is very effective in um, providing a steady current because you basically dial in the current and you can then measure it over a known resistor, how much current is actually flowing. You just tweak it on the module and it's it's extremely quiet and um, yeah and it's quite cheap as well the, the Rod Coleman modules um, 
I don't, I don't I'm not yet conclusive about for example the comparisons between an LCL which uh, for example Thomas Meyer advises you for filament supplies versus his modules but um, um, yeah I, I still have to make my mind up versus musical versus hi-fi technical definitely if you're hi-fi technical his modules are perfect um, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to, to decide on the musical aspects of, of this, do, do a proper AB between them, but um, they're very effective in producing uh, extremely quiet uh, filament supplies. So, so there we have it. It's, here is my other tube. This is the schematic here. Very much similar filament bias as well, but this one is completely, uh, I think, underused and it's very useful for all tubes that have a low filament bias and not too extreme um, uh, filament supplies. So moving them to DC and using them like this eliminates a part that is crucial for your amp because if you look at all the improvements, if you make improvements in the output stages, of course, it will only have a limited effect. But if you make it at the input stages where the signals are small and you get improvements here that get amplified later again, have much more impact on your overall sound quality of your amp and I think for these tubes that are oscillation prone and have are high gain and that have these low bias and these low filament requirements it is just a, a breeze to implement filament bias with the and to get these advantages so I would um, definitely consider it in these situations if you're building an amp like this um, with indirectly heated tubes, which most people seem to do. Um, so, yes, to me it is a, um, for the moment it's a no-brainer. It, it removes components. Um, the DC is quite easy to supply, uh, just a little DC, DC conversion and uh, then a, a, a little regulator and it's all solved. So it's, um, I would uh, definitely recommend it. So that's this video about filament bias. Um, as I said, advantages, less oscillations, less components, better sound quality um, for the little cost of having to um, provide clean DC power to your tubes. But um, that's about it. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. I hope this was useful for uh, those of you that uh, do um, are interested in tube amp design. And uh, I hope to catch you in the next video. Until then, all the best. And hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.